Hello everybody, this is David, again here with another Verilog video using an FPGA. We're going to be using the uh, Basis 3, and I'm going to code something I just wanted to do a little project on. It's a, a Keurig machine simulator. So if you know what a Keurig machine is, you know, you, you lift the lid, you put your K cup in there, you pop the lid down, it punctures the cup, you press a button, it makes your coffee right and then when it needs water you got to refill it with water so we're going to simulate all of that on the basis three so this switch right here is going to simulate opening the cover you put in your k-cup in and when this comes down uh, we'll see a light blink and so it'll be in the ready state we're going to use a state machine um, we're going to use these these three buttons going across here uh, horizontal this one is going to be the button where you push to make the coffee we're going to have a reset. Of course, a Keurig machine doesn't really have a reset, but we're going to use one for developer purposes. And then this button over here is to simulate filling with the water. And we're also going to have the uh, seventh segment display display how many cups of water we have left um, to use before we need to fill it. It'll also tell us when making the coffee is done. And that's also shown on these 16 LEDs right here. We'll see them all count up um, like a cup of coffee is being poured. Um, I think, yeah, that's it. Um, it'll say fill on here when it needs water. So let me take you over to the code. All right, here I am in the Vado Design Suite by Xilinx. Um, it's a software that you use to program these Digilent boards with Xilinx FPGAs. Okay, let's get into the code. Um, here's the here's the modules that's involved. Let's go over that first. So here's the top, which represents the whole system. Uh, we're gonna have a state machine. We're gonna use a one hertz signal, which I did a video on how to create one of these before. Um, we're gonna use that switch, um, and it's gonna be debounced. We're gonna use three de button debouncers. Um, and we have a seven segment control module and then a MUX and I'll explain the reason for all of those in a second. Okay, here's the block diagram for the system. As you can see, we have our we have the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right and then that big box in the middle represents our system. So we have the three buttons, the make coffee, the reset, and then the refill with water, the switch to load the K-cup, and the 100 megahertz signal that is being generated on the basis three board and you can see how they're all connected um, the 100 megahertz will go into the one hertz generator and then of course um, that'll get that'll convert the 100 megahertz signal into a one hertz signal which will go into the state machine and into the mux to create the blink effect on led5 when we are in the ready state after the switch after the k-cup has been loaded and I'll show you all the states in the in the, uh, in the code, but um, all those are go all those inputs go to a button to bounce and then into the state machine, um, and then the state machine outputs a couple of signals. The cup count is one, and also the state in order to control what the seven segment displays are doing. Um, all right, so now let's take you over to. All right, back in the code. Let me just expand this out here. We have all our modules here up at the top, you can see. So here's our inputs to the top, just like our block diagram showed. We have the 100 megahertz clock, the make coffee button, the fill water button, and the reset button, the, the switch to simulate the pod, and then here's the outputs for the seven segment display, um, and then the LEDs. And you know, in the top module, we're creating some wires and connect for all the connections for all the instantiated modules down here. So let me go through um, easier modules first. The button to bouncer. This is one I've used before. It's just a really simple one. You get the clock coming in. Um, you get the button signal in and a button signal out. We'll create some intermediate registers here. So on the clock edge, we'll debounce it by um, having that signal have to ripple through each of these intermediates 
before it gets to the button out and that will debounce it. Um, here's the one Hertz generator module pretty much the same as I've done before in my other videos we get the 100 megahertz um, clock coming in the reset and the clock 1 Hertz coming out um, I got a register here I initialize it to zero the clock reg um, and then the counter reg here we um, use an always at the pause edge clock or reset if reset will reset the counter reg else if counter reg is half of 100 megahertz then we will reset the counter reg back to zero and we will toggle this clock one hertz reg that is tied into the output clock one hertz right here and then finishing off the always block else it'll just increment so um, this register will just increment increment when it gets to this value it'll be reset to zero and we will toggle the output and then in effect we'll have a one hertz signal all right let's go into the state machine <clears throat> so we have the one hertz signal coming in the button to make coffee the button to fill the water the reset the switch for um, k cup loading and then we create i create a couple of internal signals if you remember from the block diagram those two signals that go to seven segment control they're right here it's the cup count and this the state so we have five states so we need a three bit for a state all right here's all the internal registers there's a switch register for the switch um, for loading the k-cup uh, counter here this is used in controlling the LED register and then the cup count reg so you can have you can make three cups of coffee before you got to fill the water here are the states right here um, define some parameters so we got idle ready making coffee finish and need water and speaking of state machine let me take you over to a state transition state transition diagram before we get into all this other stuff okay here's the state <clears throat> transition diagram so the reset signal up there anytime we hit reset we'll go into the idle state and so that's where we want our system to pretty much start at so that's why we have the reset so we can start it there we know it's going to start there so to go from um, state to state um, to go from idle to ready um, that's where we will simulate closing the lid of the Keurig onto and puncturing the K cup. So as the switch goes from high to low, that's that's the simulation simulated move there. Now when we're in ready, we'll have an LED blink letting us know that it's ready. <clears throat> and then we hit button L, which is the make button to make coffee. We'll go into the making coffee um, state and then and to get to the finish state we'll, we'll have a counter once we get into making coffee the counter will start counting up and that's um, for the LEDs the simulating the the coffee filling up too that's tied to that counter but once it reaches 15 or full it's a four bit counter we'll go to finish now there's a branch here from finish we could either go to idle if we still have water so our cup count is greater than zero or we can go to the need water state if cup count is equal to zero and then the only way to get back to idle from the need water state other than using the reset button is to hit the button r which is the fill button to simulate filling the machine back up with water okay now back to our verilog code here's our states as we just saw we'll create a state register to keep track of the states and then down here we'll do all the next state logic so always at the pause edge one hertz clock or reset if reset we'll go to the idle state um, and then else we'll use a case statement down here so <clears throat> in the case that state reg is in idle if we get a switch register come on from when the switch goes from high to low then we'll go into the ready state once in the ready state we get button one which is the button l make coffee we'll go to the making coffee state and then once we're in the making coffee state once the counter hits 15 we'll go to finish now if cup count is equal to zero we'll go to need water else 
it's, it'll be greater than zero, so we still have water, it will go back to the idle state. And here's the need water state. And if you hit button two, which is that fill button, it'll take us back to the idle state. Now here's all the logic for all the registers. So the switch reg works like this with a neg edge switch or pause edge clock one hertz <clears throat> or pause edge reset, excuse me. If reset, the switch reg will go to zero. So that's this is a register that'll be set when that switch <clears throat> is pulled down simulating the pod has been loaded we're in the ready state now once we transition once we hit the button and transition from the ready state into the making coffee state it'll turn that register off and it'll turn that blinking line off <clears throat> so that's what we finishing up here so if we get a clock hurt a positive clock hertz and the state reg is in making coffee We'll reset that register, which that register controls that blinking LED. So we'll set it off here. Otherwise, when we hit the negative switch, we'll set the register to one. And now here's the counter reg. It's a basic counter. It's a four bits. So if state reg is making coffee, then we'll counter equals counter plus one. <clears throat> and then, you know, once this counter gets to 15, we'll transition from making coffee to finish state. And so this will, in effect, reset this counter. And then here's the cup count reg. Just every time, if we're in button one and we're in state ready, um, then we want the cup count wrench to um, decrement. So it's going to start at three once we reset. That's the just reset state we'll put it at three cups decrement three if we make three cups of coffee then we'll be out and then we'll have to use button two to reset it back to three now the led reg is what controls the leds that count up you can see the pattern here how as it goes from counts from zero to 15 we're filling up another LED until so this is like every second another LED will pop on to simulate like the cup being filled with coffee <clears throat> and then here's where I tie in some assigned statements for the output I I had to do some some tricky stuff in order to get this well I had to put a multiplexer in. I don't know if you saw from the block diagram the multiplexer but it has to do with me swizzling the LED bits. So I want I wanted LED five to be the blinking light in the ready state, but then it the, all of these LEDs as a whole zero through fifteen need to be controlled um, by the counter in the making coffee state. So I created a multiplexer that can switch between the signals, um, one being uh, the clock one hertz signal, and um, yeah, I can show that to you here in a second. Let's go over the 7 sec. Well, here's the MUX. I'm going to have that clock 1 one hertz going into input A of the MUX. And then a signal I call from the state machine, which is called LED5, which, <clears throat> well, it just falls in line with the regular uh, making coffee state and counting up. But I'm going to have this, um, I'm going to use the state from the state machine, bring it in here. And basically that whatever is going to come through A or B, come through the MUX, is going to be dependent on the state. And this state is the ready state. So the only time we're going to get a clock one hertz signal through the MUX is when state is in the ready state. Otherwise, it'll just be the regular LEDs when the cup is filling. So here's the seven segment. Here's how we control that. We take the state machine signals, cup count, and state, and we bring them in here. Um, we use that 100 megahertz clock and the reset for registers in here. Um, and then these two are the um, outputs for the seven segment display. We got the segments. We're only going to use seven segments because the eighth one is the dot and we're not going to use that. And then the four anodes. So these are common, common cathode, I think, on this basis three. I don't know. I called this a little while ago, but it still works. I'll show you in a second. Here, let me go keep going through. So I got a red 2-bit register here 
anode select, anode timer. So <clears throat> when you're controlling like more than one segment on a seven segment display, you have to switch through each segment at a fast rate so that it appears to the human eye that all four of them are on at the same time. When in effect, they're just being turned on and off at a really fast rate. And so that's what I'm using with, with these, uh, that's what I'm gonna do with these timers and this select. So I bring in that 100 megahertz clock. Um, if it's reset, we're gonna reset them to zero. But then else will come down here from that 100 megahertz clock. Every time it gets goes from zero to this number, which is basically 100,000, then we will increment the anode select. And um, yep, and then else we will increment the anode timer. So there's a timer that counts from zero to 99,999, and it will increment the anode select, which is a two bit value, which down here in this case statement now, the case of the anode select, if we have for each value, each of the four values, we will turn on one of the anodes with a zero because the, yeah, that's the way it's done on the basis three. You don't turn it on, you turn it off to select it. So we're gonna select each anode in turn, turning each segment on. And now for the segment part, we're, it's gonna be based on the state. So we bring from the state machine, now we're gonna tell the seven segments which what character to show based on the state. So in the idle state here, we're gonna display the cup count. So it's gonna be, this is the letter C, U, P, and then for the fourth digit, there's a case statement based on the cup count. So we're either gonna have three, two, one, or zero, which represents the amount of cups you can make before you're out of water. <clears throat> now for the ready state, we have the same thing, <clears throat> excuse me, cup, and then the cup count, making coffee, uh, we'll do the same thing, cup and cup count. Now when the coffee's done, um, we have just simple D-O-N-E will show up. And then when we're in the need water state, it will show F-I-L-L. -L. And then, um, well, that's pretty much all the modules. So here's the, uh, the constraints file. You'll have to get your master XDC file and copy in the code. But what you'll need is the clock signal. You'll need all 16 of the LEDs. You'll need three of the buttons, button C, button L, button R, and you'll just need one switch. I'm using switch zero. Um, and then here's all the constraints for the seven segment display. You got, we're using the seven segments here. We're not using segment eight. And then all the values for the anodes. Here, I'll take you back to the top module. And, um, well, now we can program the board, so I'll show you it working on the board here. So I'll get it, go ahead and get it programmed up, and then I'll restart the video and show you the board. All right, so I ran the synthesis implementation, generated the bitstream. I got the open hardware manager. I got the board programmed. But before I show you it working, I wanted to show you a, a warning I had pop up down here. It's a mix of synchronous and asynchronous control for register switch reg in the model state machine line 54 and you look right here and it's in this always block right here for the switch reg and i'm using three parameters in the sensitivity list here for the always block and i i don't think you see that too much i mean at least i haven't but i tried it out and it works but basically you know basically i have the reset signal doing this, the clock one hertz and um, state reg doing, you know, this and um, otherwise the negative switch will cause this to happen. So I don't know what what the warning is. Um, could be a design thing that you don't want to do some industry standard, but hey, it works and I'll show you. All right, here we are on the basis three. It's just been programmed and you can see it says cup three right here and I'll go through all the states and we'll see if make sure it works so here's the switch simulating opening the cover pop the k-pot in 
push it down, you puncture the cake up. The, the light's blinking, saying we're in the ready state right now. Now we're going to hit this button and make coffee. You can see that the cup amount gets decremented, and then we have the LED simulating the filling of the coffee cup. And then it says done. Now we'll do this a couple more times. We'll put in another K cup, make another cup of coffee here. And I'll do this one more time so I can show you the need water state. All right, that cup is done. We got one cup left in there. It won't make it unless you go to the ready state. So that's what that switch reg is for to control that happening. So we'll pop in another K cup. Boom. Press the button, make some coffee. I like coffee. I drink one cup in the mornings. Gets me going. I have a Keurig too. <laughs> Pretty easy. Although the K cups aren't really biodegradable I guess but there you have it the fill is uh, so now we're in that state we can't make any more cups of coffee until we fill the water so got this button right here to just simulate it filling up and now we're back at cup three and you can go through it all again so there you have the Keurig machine simulator on a basis three using Verilog thanks for watching